know, there, you know, there was a time where, you know, I started hearing, like, yo, you know, Big June is sick. And then I remember you asking me, you know, what did I do to lose weight? Because, you know, you were having heart problems and stuff like that. So, you know, when did that start ha happening? And what were your thoughts? And, you know, how did it make you feel? Uh, it's good that you asked this question because this is a very, very serious situation. Mm -hmm. um, when I left to Honduras back in 97 with Casabe, mm -hmm. 98, 97, um, I didn't have, I was single. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any knowledge of medical diseases, uh, you know, any disease and stuff like that and mm -hmm. things that ran in the family. And I had heard about diabetes, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't know about hypertension. I didn't know anything about that. What yeah. I know was music. Yeah. Um, so, and I was getting fatter and fatter. Wow. I was getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. My eating habits were terrible. Wow. Um, I've always heard about that, but in a joking way. So I never, like, you know, accepted anything oh, I heard. Yeah. And mm -hmm. every, everybody, everybody knew it. Mm -hmm. um, Bilito has a famous joke. Okay. Uh, that, because I, I, I remember I went to go mix, uh, I went to go dump something in his studio. Uh-huh. I think it was first I got album, mm -hmm. and um, and, he, and we went to go eat, and I asked with uh, like a lot of chicken. Mm -hmm. and so he always tells people, "Big G doesn't come here, tres pollos." Or something. <laughs> you know, it's just a joke. But mm -hmm. but I, you know, I used to eat a lot. Mm, okay. I mean, I mean a lot, a lot, a lot, and and, and just bad stuff. Oh wow, grease uh, everywhere, yeah, just not, yeah. not, nothing healthy. Nothing healthy. The thing, mm -hmm. and and that comes from making money at an early age. Yeah. And go home and. He, my mother makes some um, salad with something. Like, nah, I don't want that. I go to the corner, make buy me hero sandwich, mm -hmm. uh, fifty cent soda, yeah. and mad chips, and just you know. Mm -hmm. And that was my life. So wow. I grew up eating all that fast food and all that stuff and mm -hmm. fried stuff and not non healthy foods. So when I get to Honduras, um, I don't know how much I weighed, but I was very very big. Yeah. My pants size was was size fifty. Oh wow, you got to fifty. Yeah, wow. my, my pants size was size 50, um, and I hadn't been at a doctor since I was, like, maybe 13 wow. when my mother took me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know how I was, you know, physically and yeah. health-wise. So years passed by, and I meet my wife, which is now my wife, mm -hmm. and she asked me, when was the last time I went to the doctor? And I told her, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So she took me to the doctor to get checked out and make sure everything is fine with me. Yeah. And it was like, you are pre-diabetic. Wow. And if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to become a diabetic. I didn't know what diabetes was, like I said. My grandfather was a diabetic, mm -hmm. but I didn't know it. Your body. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I didn't pay attention. Mm -hmm. I kept eating a whole bunch of fried chicken and <laughs> drinking three liter Coca-Colas in Honduras and all that stuff. Man. And uh, after a while, after a while, um, I, I was a diabetic. Wow. And started on the pill and hypertension as well at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and through the year, in Honduras, I started losing weight in Honduras. Okay. I started losing weight. Mm -hmm. I started eating less. But um, my heart, mm -hmm. from the, you know, I was overnighting and yeah. touring. And when you tour, you don't eat right. Wow. You know? You don't eat right. You eat whatever you can when you can. Mm -hmm, exactly. And all those for doing that for so many years, mm -hmm. and overnighting, the, the that took a toll on me. Yeah. It advanced my my health issues by five ten years. Wow. So um, when I decided to move back to the U.S. with my family in 2009, mm -hmm. I think late 2000 in two, late 2010, I start feeling bad, like shortness of breath and can't mm -hmm. catch my breath. And I go to the hospital, and um, they do a whole bunch of exams. Yeah. I was in the hospital for like a week. Wow. And um, they diagnosed me with congestive heart failure. Wow. Yeah. So um, I wanted to move back to Honduras. Mm -hmm. I told my wife, man, we just got here to the U.S., and I just came to just to get sick here. Yeah. Just to get sick here. I mm -hmm. want to go back to Honduras. She's like... Yeah, but the kids are not going to want to go back to Honduras. Yeah. And it's not because we had a bad life. I was living living large, just, mm -hmm. you know, for a say. Yeah. Um, we didn't need anything. We had we had everything. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had a good, good life. Yeah. But, um, you know, she was like, the kids like it here. They have, you know, they just like everything here is different. Mm -hmm. 
um, they're not going to want to go back to Honduras, you know. So I was like, yeah, you got a point. Yeah. And I want them to have the best education. So I didn't, I didn't, I was like, all right, cool, I'm going to stick it out. Mm -hmm. But things just got worse. They had a, when they diagnosed me with congestive heart failure, they put in a defibrillator. Oh, wow. And the doctor I was, I was, that was at my care, the cardiologist, mm -hmm. he was using me as a guinea pig. Oh, man. For, for medications. And at the time, I wasn't into research and stuff. I was, mm -hmm. He's the doctor. I trust him, and yeah. I really wasn't much of um, into God's word, so mm -hmm. I didn't know God's promises for us. I didn't know a lot of things. Yeah. So I would say yeah to everything, mm -hmm. and I wasn't getting better at all. He was just main. It was just maintaining me and getting worse. Wow. Um, and then in uh, two thousand and two thousand seven eighteen. No, no, sorry. Last year, mm -hmm. 2020, 2020, I went into the hospital in January with my heart functioning at 5%. Oh, snap. Yeah, with my heart functioning at 5%. Mm -hmm. um, but before this, in 2017, mm -hmm. I went on a mission trip to Honduras for my church, mm -hmm. and I contracted a virus, a respiratory virus called RSV. Oh, wow. Which isn't common for adults. It's usually mm -hmm. in babies. Oh, wow. But for some reason, I happened to get it. Mm -hmm. And I was in a coma for five days. In Honduras? No, here. Okay. I came back sick. Mm -hmm. And I got here at my house at 10 o'clock at night. At 2 in the morning, I was in the ER. Wow, man. And I was in the, I was in a coma for five days. And the, that's when I found out that the doctor I, I was that was at my care, he mm -hmm. was using me as a guinea pig. Because I was taking like almost 10 medications. And when I came out of the coma, the doctors told me, Mr. Guerrero, why are you taking all this medication? Mm -hmm. These medications don't work together. Wow. I'm like, well, y'all gave it to me. I mean, not them literally, but the doctors gave it to me. That's mm -hmm. why I'm taking it. Exactly. They're like, we're taking all of this off. You're only going to take two medications, one for the heart, um, something else. I forgot what it was. Mm -hmm. And you're going to take insulin as needed. If you need it, you take it. If you don't need it, don't take it. Because I already had dropped a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And that was because of God. God yeah. made me drop that weight. Wow. Over a hundred pounds, mm -hmm. so um, the screen again. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I came, I came out of, I came out of the the coma, mm -hmm. and so twenty twenty, um, my heart is already, you know, yeah, weak and weak and weak and weak and weak. Mm -hmm. So that's when um, I go into the hospital for a month, mm -hmm. and they decide to, there's like, you need a heart transplant. Wow! But to bridge you over to the heart tra heart transplant, we have to put in a pump a heart pump mm -hmm. so that's what i have now in me now um uh, the heart pump the lvad it's called the lvad mm -hmm. and which pumps the blood is, is, is installed on the left side of my heart mm -hmm. which pumps the blood correctly through all my organs wow and through all my body and everything um and i was in the hospital total two months and a half wow so the word got out obviously people mm -hmm. knew about it a lot of people were praying for me yeah liter literally all over the world I had people, there were people praying for me in South America, in Chile, Colombia, in Europe, wow. England, uh, all over the U.S., in Central America, uh, uh, a tremendous prayer team. Yeah. Um, and, and, and God placed the best doctors at my care and the best nurses. Wow. For those two months and a half that I was in the hospital, 90% of the doctors were all Christian. Um, wow. Uh, even the nurses. And when I was in there, um, I didn't feel that I was there because of what I was dealing with health wise. Mm -hmm. I felt that God permitted for me to go there to do his work. Exactly. I and see while, it. While I was in there, I was preaching to the, to the nurses, the doctors, people used to come to my room just to talk to me about their problems and get a word from uh, a word of, of knowledge or a word from God. Or wow. Like that. And and it was incredible. And and when I every time I go to the doctor, because I've been back into the hospital set in several several occasions for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, and they come to the room, even though even though I'm not at their care, they're not at my care. Yeah, they know I'm there. Mr. Girls here. They go to my room just to say hi to me and and to talk and mm -hmm. even um I'm you know look for me for a, for a marriage counseling and stuff like that. Wow. So I know there was more. It was work to be done. Yes. You know, it wasn't really much about my health situation, but I've been blessed and God has given me the strength. Yeah. 
the joy of the Lord is our strength, and 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 I rejoice in serving God. Like Amen. I said, I'm a pastor now. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a administrative pastor and a worship leader, um, and I love serving serving God. I still produce. I still do things in the secular because it's, a, it's, it's work. Mm -hmm. I own a studio. I own a company. Yes. And that's the work that comes in. So mm -hmm. I still I do a lot of stuff still. I'm not too exposed like maybe I used to. A lot mm -hmm. of people might not know where I'm at or what I'm doing. Yeah. But I'm still active. Yes. Um, and, you know, and I do things uh, in a Christian ambient as well. Mm -hmm. But my heart belongs to Christ. And, yes. And, and that's the best route to, to go. Uh, never expect or wait till you think you're ready mm -hmm. to accept Christ or to, or to take that step into being part of his church or part of his kingdom. Wow. Um, a lot of people say uh, or expect they want to be at a certain level to be able to do that. No, God wants you the way you are. I can't pressure you into changing. Yep. I'm not the one that's going to change you. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to change you. Amen. So I don't go, I don't, I'm not a part of the cancel culture. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you got gay people, lesbians all over the place. Mm -hmm. I don't love their sin, but I love them. Yeah, exactly. You get what I'm saying? I understand you 100%. You know, so so it's, it's like um, all my best friends, my close friends here, mm -hmm. they're all di from different religions. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a religious person. Yeah. I have a relationship with Christ. Exactly. That's what it is. I'm non-denominational. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I can't, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm Pentecostal, I'm Baptist. No, I'm not none of that. Yeah. I'm not denomination. I'm a disciple of Christ. That's what I am. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I promote. So yep. <clears throat> I promote Christ. So, you know, and, 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 the, and, and the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I love everybody. You know, everybody's welcome to be around me. I'm friends with everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a people's person. Mm -hmm. And people who always see me, they see a joyful person. Yeah. Um, and... I guess I, I guess I get part of that from my dad as well because he, mm -hmm. my, my a lot of musicians used to go to my basement just to ask my dad for advice. Yeah. My dad developed so many musicians that you guys grew up listening to that people don't know. Mm -hmm. One of the people that are sat that people listen to right now in New York, the person that gave him the first opportunity in New York was my dad. Wow. Don Cuella. Don Cue Okay. Back then, his name wasn't Don Cuella. We used to, we used to his first, his name is Guillermo. Guillermo, yeah. So mm -hmm. we, we 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 used to call we called him Guillermo. Mm -hmm. And he used to play with my dad. And my dad, uh, his first um, music book mm -hmm. was given to him from my dad. Wow. You know, you can ask all these guys, and they're all going to mm -hmm. tell you. Yeah. They're all going to give you reference of my dad as the maestro, as a teacher, as a counselor. Mm -hmm. And I think I inherited a lot of those things, yeah. from, a lot of those qualities. Definitely. Um, and I have a lot of, of family that, mm -hmm. that are musicians, you know, here in New York mm -hmm. and in Honduras. Yeah. You know, so I, it's, it's a big dynasty. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> dealing with, going back to the health stuff, um, you know, there's a reason why God let these things happen to me. Yes, exactly. And I'm a living testimony. Mm -hmm. And through my testimony, a lot of other people come to Christ. It helps a lot of people, and it gives people a lot of strength yeah. to keep moving forward, to fight, mm -hmm. and to not to think just because you're dealing with a certain illness mm -hmm. that that's the end of it for you. Nah. Yeah, exactly. The heart is our motor. Yep. But my heart belongs to Christ. Mm -hmm. And because I have a deep relationship with Christ, I know my time here is not done yet because my communion with him yes. lets me know that. Yep. You get what I'm saying? So I know that it's not time for me to go yet. Mm -hmm. There's things I have to fulfill. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And when it's time, it's going to be time. Exactly. You know, but I don't, I'm not scared of dying. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not scared. My family is, is set. Mm -hmm. My wife, my kids, yeah. you know, so, and, and they also serve at church. They, mm -hmm. they, they men and women of God. Yeah. My wife and my kid, my wife is a, a co-leader at the church as well. Wow. Uh, my kid, my son is a video director. Okay. Um, uh, my, my daughter, um, deals with, um, the screens and tech part. Wow. You know, so, and she's a musician as well. So God bless you guys. Yeah. Man. God bless yeah, the amen. Guerrero family. You know, so it, it, it's, it's a blessing for me. Mm hmm you know, yeah. that my family is, is continuing that legacy, mm -hmm. not from, from me, but from my dad, from, you know, from yeah. all these people that's coming down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. So, and I just got out the hospital last week, Saturday. Oh, we, today's a week. I just got out the hospital. Wow. Because a month ago I had a surgery. On August 30th, I had a surgery. Okay. I had a gastric sleeve. Because mm. um, um, 
to be able to lose more weight mm -hmm. and to be able to get on a heart transplant mm -hmm. list. Okay. Um, so that's why, you know, people be like, yo, June is so slim now. Mm -hmm. um, big June is just, uh, the big is just, uh, you yeah, know, right? <laughs> I'm not big no more. Mm -hmm. My, you know, literally now, from I mentioned I used to wear a size 50. Yeah. Now I wear a size 36. Wow. I don't remember awesome. using 36 none of my adult life. <laughs> you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, even my, my son is bigger than me now. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. Yeah. But, but it's a blessing. It's a blessing because I'm able to be an um, example for a lot of people faith-wise and, and in a lot of a lot of other situations, but mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a true blessing, and I, and I, and, I, and I thank God for that, and I, and I pray that any of these youngsters that see me and want to know about history and and how certain things are done and how mm -hmm. I even family wise and how you balance things out, mm -hmm. you know, they, they feel free to ask me or contact me. Anything yes, like that. but um, you know, I just mm -hmm. love what I do and try to help out as much as I can. Yes, and I see it. And I appreciate it. This yeah. is why I even, you know, thank you before coming to do the interview. Like, you know, just, you know, thank you. Thank you so much. Sometimes I, sometimes mm -hmm. I get upset. Mm -hmm. Oh, not, not upset. I get bothered mm -hmm. <clears throat> that people that have access to me uh -huh. don't take advantage of that access. Yeah. Because I wish in my time mm -hmm. I would have had access to a person like me. Yeah, right. I didn't have that. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I didn't yeah, have that. I know exactly I what you mean. I struggled to be able to do a lot of things, to have my first keyboard. To, well, my first keyboard, my dad gave it to me, but mm -hmm. to get things be, be, better. And, and I struggled for a lot of things. I, know, I didn't have that kind of support. Yeah. I had to make the mistakes in order to learn. Wow. Sometimes that's necessary, but if I could avoid my kids from making a, a mistake, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. Exactly. But there's people that have the opportunity to come ask me a question mm -hmm. or to come ask for advice and they don't do that and yeah. then when they do something and it comes out bad yep. I'm like man why are you just coming to me I, yeah. I could have I could have helped you out I could have gave you the the, mm -hmm. the resources to do what you really wanted to do yep, exactly. and it would have came out better than what you they'd be like yeah man yeah mm -hmm. but next time a lot of people think nah it's Big June he's too expensive yeah let me tell you something. If you don't know, if you don't ask, you won't know. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I sup I help out a lot of people. Mm -hmm. If you if you ask the people that I produce in the last few years on the business side, how did I work with them? Mm -hmm. They'll tell you. There's no money in the guy from our yeah. uh, culture. Yep. You know, so obviously, when they when someone pays for an album. Mm -hmm. You, you got to help them out. Yeah, exactly. I'm not saying do it for free. Mm -hmm. I don't give my work away. Yeah, exactly. You know, but but I help a lot of people out in different ways. Yeah. And then when they when they look for a different source, because they embarrass or like that pen, I come on, man, it's me you yeah, talking to. Yeah, for real. You don't need to have pen out with me. I'm your brother. Yeah. I want to help you. That's what's up. Take man. advantage of it. Send mm -hmm. me your music. Let me mix it for you. Mm -hmm. If you don't got the money right now, don't worry about it. Pay me later or whatever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Obviously, I got to like what it is. If I don't like it, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, exactly. And, and I'm very delicate with, with the type of material. I don't like vulgar stuff. I don't get involved in that kind okay. of stuff. Okay. Okay. It got to be something that I like. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm going to give you an example. Mm hmm Nino Arzu. Yeah. You know how long, before I did that album, by Bailando, Bailando con Nino Arzu? Yeah. Before that album? Mm hmm I was telling him for years, yo, I'm here to help you out, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, just, yeah. just let me know. Because I was involved in his first album. So mm -hmm. exactly. I was like, yo, let me help you out. Whatever you want. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nebo used to tell him. Chetty used to tell him. Yeah. Everybody used to tell him until he <laughs> finally convinced himself that, you know, to, mm -hmm. he was going to take advantage of the opportunity. And yeah. we did it. And that's one of the best out sounding albums that Nino has. Yes, it is. His, those arrangements are on point. Is is it's so delicate. It's, yeah. it's well done. Exactly. You That's a great saying? Nino album. Yep. So, and I'm not saying that. Oh, I'm not boasting about it. I'm yeah. just saying. But now, what's happening? Mm -hmm. He he does. He hasn't came. He's he's not coming back to do too much here anymore. Yeah. You don't have to. You're not obligated to. Exactly. But take advantage of the resources. Yep. You get what I'm mm -hmm. saying. Um, and, and there's other people that, you know, the same thing has happened, but I'm here to support and help out everybody, you know, mm -hmm. especially people that I have good relationship with. Yes. You know, exactly. um, I know if I call Nino right now, I tell him, yo, bro, I need you to get on, get on this track. Mm 
mm-hmm. he's gonna do it. Yep, exactly. You know what I'm saying so. I just like mm-hmm. I have the confidence with him. Yeah, he got the confidence with me. Exactly. Everything is not money. If we but if mm-hmm. we come to an agreement or something, yeah. I expect you to fulfill it. Exactly. But <clears throat> it's not necessary because I don't live off of my music anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I don't live off of this anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is like a hobby to me. Is you know, I, I can't leave music.